Strolling down the sidewalk has never been so complicated since we entered the physical distancing world of COVID-19. Hello and welcome to the Unpublished Cafe. I'm Ed Hand. We're coming to you from a remote location and practicing physical distancing to enhance safety. Canada has been on lockdown for about a month now as the country grapples with this pandemic. We're told to stay home except for essentials. Yet, many would like to get a get some fresh air, maybe some exercise. The problem is, if you live in a densely populated area like downtown anywhere, there isn't enough room for people to physically distance in such close quarters. Cities have been patchwork in their approach to offering more by closing some streets to cars so pedestrians have more room. Coming up on the Unpublished Cafe, we'll hear how various cities approached and solved the problem. Joining us later, Edmonton City Councilor Andrew Knack. He helped open up more roads for pedestrians in the Alberta capital. As well, Ottawa City Councilor Sean Menard will join us to discuss why this city seems so reluctant to open roads. And to start us off, I am pleased to be joined this morning by Sarah Hoyles, Executive Director of Paths for People in Edmonton. And Sarah, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Was Edmonton quick to embrace the closure of roads to vehicles for pedestrians to get out? Uh, Not as quick as some. Calgary, our neighbor to the south, actually beat us. So, um, I mean, it is happening, but uh, it's not as quick as we'd like to, we would have liked, yeah. Uh, I am wondering by, you you know, closing some roads for pedestrians and such, was there much of an impact on public transit? Oh, I mean, public transit really feel for public transit right now in that it's a really important piece to the infrastructure network and to the transportation network. Uh, But it makes it challenging for people to practice physical distancing. But, you know, it's some, for some folks, it's the only viable way to get long stretches. So um, as far as street closures, that has not impacted the actual, because when you look at the actual distance, we have uh, right now just a little more than two kilometers of roadway in Edmonton. When you look at the fact that we have 10,000 kilometers of roadways in Edmonton, that's not even 1% of our roadways. So no, it does not impact. The short and the long of it is it does not impact our uh, public transit. Sarah Hoyles is joining us in the Unpublished Cafe, Executive Director of Paths for People in Edmonton, as we discuss cities that have closed down roads to op- open up more opportunities for pedestrians to get out and, and get a stretch. And, and were Edmontonians finding it difficult to, to get room for a walk or bike or, or fresh air? Or was it really a big problem for them? Absolutely. I mean, we look at how wide are our sidewalks. I don't know about in Ottawa, but in Edmonton, most city sidewalks are only 1.8 meters wide. So we're being told two meters is the way to get proper physical distancing. And our sidewalks, even if people are on either end of the sidewalk, they're still not practicing proper physical distancing. And, you know, some people will make the argument, oh, we'll just step off step off onto the, into the street or step off into some onto grass. But when we look at, you know, who are the folks that are walking and rolling really, I mean, there are people with strollers, there are people with mobility devices like wheelchairs or walkers, and they don't have the ability to just step off. And also when we tell people just step off, it means that they're going to go into the road. And I'm not sure what's happening in Ottawa per se, but in Edmonton, because there are far fewer people on the road driving their cars, it's actually creating space for these massive roads for people to speed. And so it's actually even more dangerous to step out into the road now than it was previous to the pandemic. See, I would have figured that uh, because traffic was or traffic is a lot lighter because of the, uh, the pandemic, the you know vehicle pedestrian issues would be reduced. Yeah, you'd think, <laughs> but that's not that's not what's actually playing out. And really, I mean, yes, people can go off into the street, but why would we? <laughs> that that's kind of encouraging risky behavior. What we would like to see is that the city is actually proactive and encouraging people to get out and have space to do it. So they've started. They've definitely made a start, but um, where these these 
roadways that have been allocated thus far. They're right um, in a few, they're only in two neighborhoods in the in the entire city, and they're in affluent areas or more affluent areas, so people with more money. So they're actually people that have vehicles. And um, a lot like Ottawa with having, there's, you know, some really beautiful parkland. Um, that's, those are natural places for folks to go. But access points to the parkland are only available in certain sections of the city, which are also affluent areas. So we're looking at how do people that are in areas that are densely populated but don't have access to the River Valley, uh, where do they go? They either have to, especially if they're vulnerable populations, they have to get on a bus, which makes them more susceptible to contracting uh, COVID-19. Um, they're having to, you know, negotiate those those spaces, those tight spaces. So, and also people that are lower income, they live in smaller spaces. So they actually find that they can't get, you know, a breathing room. <laughs> they can't just walk out into their backyard. They don't have a backyard. So the idea is, is that we want there to be space, more space, not less, and there needs to be space all across the city. So people don't need to travel long distances. Right now, how the space is allocated is there's only, it's less than 7% of Edmontonians actually can walk to these spaces. Because, and when we say walk, we're, we're basically being saying, okay, they have a kilometer. If, if they could walk or roll a kilometer, they could get to the, these allocated roadways. And all, less than 7% of Edmontonians can actually do that at this point. So it's really not um, as widespread as we think it, sh it should be. So it actually encourages folks to get out. I mean, really what this is about is it's about, you know, we're, we're being told not to congregate. So mm -hmm. how do people make sure that they are able to get outside, be physically active while still maintaining uh, physical distance? And this is about mental health and wellness. So if people aren't given the space, uh, it, it affects us in a really negative way. So what we're saying is more, not less. And we don't want to create places that are, uh, are, you know, destinations or novel. The idea is that there needs to be so many that they are not novel, that they are not something to go visit. It's only for people that live in that area. And that way we'll definitely mitigate uh, people coming into closer quarters and still being able to maintain their, their, their mental and physical health. Yeah. You mentioned the sidewalks and, uh, in Edmonton, they're 1.8 meters. I'm not sure what they are in Ottawa, probably the same, but do you foresee a time when basic infrastructure, such as the sidewalks going to be remod remodeled, rebuilt for, for cities with wider dimensions for pedestrians because of the situation? I mean, I think this is a really disruptive time and it's disrupting everyone's lives but it's also an opportunity uh, I mean it's an unfortunate opportunity that like no one wants to be in this situation but it's what it's really doing is forcing us to really look at how are our cities built and who are they built for and right now people are desperate to get outside and they don't have the the ways and means to do it and when we're looking at, uh, you know, future times, it looks like pandemics. I mean, I don't want to speculate, but there's the possibility that this is not the only one. So how are we building cities and who are we building them for? Are they for cars? Or are they for people? And truly, when cities first came to exist, it was about commerce and bringing people, people together. So, yes, I think that this is an opportunity for us to really look at how are we building cities? Who are we building them for? And who, what users get prioritized? Motor vehicles, they're vital, but uh, in some cases, but for most folks that live in a city, we're looking at elderly, we're looking at children, we're looking at people that don't, can't afford a car, um, choose not to have a car. Uh, there's a huge population that are not part of motor vehicle drivers. And so we want to make sure that it's an equitable transportation system that looks at all users across the entire lifespan, not just uh, a certain age bracket. So we want to make sure that, yes, what, how are cities being built? And we really, truly hope that this you know, broadens the conversation about how our roads are envisioned and for who. 
Sarah, I want to thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Sarah Hoyles is the Executive Director of Paths for People in Edmonton. Well, Edmonton, Calgary, and Vancouver have closed some roads for pedestrians to have more room. Ottawa, well, has been reluctant to do so, although the work of Ottawa City Councilor Sean Menard is starting to pay off in the capital. And Sean joins us now. And Sean, you represent a fairly dense ward in the city of Ottawa. How much were you hearing from residents about the need for more room? You know, we, we had received hundreds of emails. Uh, some of them were from just people reaching out to us on their own, and others were from campaigns from groups like Ecology Ottawa in the city. But all of them were saying that we need more space, particularly during this time when people want to physically distance uh, while accessing essential services, as well as other folks who wanted to exercise and uh, were just finding that there was no cars on the road but crowded pathways. So we were getting a, a ton of emails. Uh, on the issue, and was happy to be able to be implementing some of those uh, measures that people were asking for. Why was the city initially not willing to close roads? I think the city is still um, hesitant uh, right now, and so they, they, the reasons they were citing previously uh, were varied. Uh, some of them had to do with staff time, um, but in this case, uh, you know closing a uh, outer curb lane of the Bank Street Bridge. We did it with uh, a local company. Um, you know, I purchased the, the barrels directly. The other reasons they were citing were um, emergency issues, but that's only an issue if you close down an, an entire street and you're just talking about one lane. Um, they also cited, uh, you know, concern over um, uh, parking, um, even though our parking lanes were empty. Um, many people were choosing not to drive. They were citing that, those as concerns. So those are the main concerns they, they cited. I think their biggest one, though, is just, you know, staff time and, you know, while we had other things to deal with. So staff time was, was the issue. That seems like a pretty small thing when you're considering a big, the big issue of the pandemic right now. Yeah, it's really, un- yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's the, that's the way they were framing it and that there's other things staff could be doing and this is not a priority, but we were seeing from residents that, that it was a priority. That That is a, one of the only things you can do right now is is if you're outside of your house, uh, get some exercise or get, go get essential uh, groceries, go to the pharmacy, you know, pet hospitals. So uh, to me, it is a big issue and we ended up spending far more time um having emails come in, having to respond to media, having to respond to YouTube questions, mm. uh, resisting a very, very, um, what I view as a simple and uh, effective change for, uh, for safety, as well as for, um, you know, active transportation um, uh, productivity. So, you know, we, we really uh, should be doing this more often in the city. Uh, and it, it's all about having 880 cities, right? Where you have an eight-year-old that can feel comfortable going out and an 80-year-old feel go, comfortable going out onto the street, whether they're walking, they're biking, they're rolling. Um, those are things we need to be promoting in the city. Ottawa City Councillor Sean Menard is joining us on the Unpublished Cafe as uh, we discuss the city's approaches to opening up roads for more pedestrians to get out and be able to get some exercise in fresh air in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've already talked to some folks in Edmonton, and uh, we're at this point just trying to figure out Ottawa. And, you know, Sean, you, you know, a lot of people talk about, uh, obviously, on social media, you basically laid down across the sidewalk to show it while well, you're over six feet that you can't safely physical distance on the sidewalk. I wonder, do you think this is, this is a sign that cities are going to have to start looking at sidewalks in general, basic infrastructure and, and making it more pedestrian friendly? I mean, the, the, the situation that's evolved now obviously is, is pretty unprecedented. Uh, I, I don't, you know, we've been, you know, advocating for different size sidewalks uh, to meet AODA standards. So um, making sure that we have, sidewalks that are 1.8 meters at least wide. Uh, in this case, though, um, because of the reduction in traffic, there was such a desire to have more space for pedestrians who wanted to give that distancing, whether it's a high risk or not, they wanted to give that distance. And it made sense to, to act in this case. In the future, um, you know, I'm a big advocate for more active transportation uh, as well. It saves cities money. It is uh, better for our bottom line when you can get people to, to walk or bike. Uh, rather than take their car. 
And it is much more efficient uh, in terms of uh, our transportation system uh, overall. So those are the things that we need to be focusing on in the future. Certainly more uh, pedestrian boulevards and, and uh, you know, bike lanes uh, where they make sense. If you just focus on the car and, and make, um, you know, only transportation decisions like beg buttons just for cars, uh, you will end up with a much uh, poorer city overall and, uh, you know, a, a city that I think... Uh, will suffer um, when you're, particularly when you're in, in the core or any kind of dense area, even in the suburban areas. When you were starting to get emails about uh, closing roads, Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson had suggested people just use less traveled roads to get exercise. But in some cases, that has people having to travel even farther to get to these places, does it not? It does. Um, that's right. And it, I mean, at the end of the day, the primary argument we were making about Bank Street was that you need to access essential services there. That is where people do it in, in my area. They go to Bank Street for those essential services, and you can't access those on side streets like O'Connor. Um, they're not there. They're on Bank Street. So it makes sense to uh, open those streets up where where those essential services are. As far as exercise is concerned, I'm glad to see that the NCC has taken action and uh, is trying a pilot project on the QED now. Um, that is a recognition that their paths were crowded and they were getting a lot of emails on that issue as well. And I'm, I'm happy I spoke with Toby Nussbaum and uh, NCC leadership and I think they made the right decision on that one as well. I was wondering about that. So that's why the NCC opened up part of the, uh, the, the Queen Elizabeth driveway was because the other NCC pathways were getting too congested? They wanted to allow for more room for people to physical distance while getting exercise. They were getting a lot of emails and comments from folks about being on their pathways and having to pass each other too closely and uh, that the pathways were getting more crowded, particularly on weekends and and warmer days, which we're only going to get more of now. And so they made that decision to, in a local area only, um, to allow for that that distancing uh, from Fifth Avenue right into the uh, Golden Triangle in Ottawa. Will will the city of Ottawa be looking at opening up more roads uh, for pedestrians, closing the traffic? And, I, and the reason I say that, like, you know, the area of this city is immense. It's, you know, you can put the four largest cities in the country in the middle of it. Now, okay, that's great for downtown. But if you live, say, in Barhaven, you live in Kanata or whatever, what's available for them? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I grew up in the suburbs. There's lots of areas in the suburbs where I grew up where there would be uh, important street closures, in my view, or, or street openings to pedestrians and, and cyclists. Green Bank Road is an example. Um, you know, there's uh, there's a lot in Barhaven, in, in the more dense areas of Barhaven, where it would make sense to to open up some, some road space there. Um, so I think there is going to be more, despite the opposition we've seen, which I think is, the arguments have been very weak, um, that opposition, but they, they maintain control of council. So despite that, I, I do think you're going to see more uh, road uh, openings for, for pedestrians and, and uh, active transportation. And that won't just be in the core. You're going to see some uh, happen in more dense areas and suburban areas as well. Sean, I want to thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Sean Menard is the councillor for Capital Ward in the city of Ottawa. While Ottawa residents will soon be able to stretch their legs on some closed roads in the core, Edmonton has been ahead of the game. Andrew Knack is in his second term on Edmonton City Council, and he joins us now. And Andrew, were you getting a lot of correspondence from constituents about opening up more roads for pedestrians? Yes, uh, we were seeing that start to pick up, uh, particularly as you as you get into spats of nicer weather. Um, people were interested in being outside. You know, our chief medical officer of health has still said, yes, you're welcome to go outside and get exercise, but you have to maintain the appropriate physical distancing. And that's where this uh, really came up, because some of our uh, high traffic areas where we see a lot of people walking or see a lot of people biking are a bit more narrow. And therefore, being able to maintain that two meter separation is is close to impossible in some of these higher traffic areas. And that's why we raised this to uh, to see if there was something that could be done to help prevent uh, people from breaking that public health rule and then still be able to get exercise. How did Edmonton determine which roads it would open for pedestrians? So this was done by our city administration because uh, the city of Edmonton is under a state of local emergency. It's actually, we, we've, city council has technically really handed our decision-making authority over to our administration. 
so other than flagging the idea, they went and looked at where some of the higher traffic locations are, where they felt based off traffic volume decreases that they could free up laneway space for more people walking and biking. And so it started with uh, areas closer to our core as well. And now it's starting to spread out. And, uh, and I think they're going to continue to work on that because traffic volumes are down really across the city. And so this isn't really causing an impact to anyone uh, uh, who even needs to continue to drive. This is, this is pretty well working for, for everyone we have. So the city of Edmonton does plan on opening up even more roads then? It does. uh, From what we were told, it does look like they're considering even more roads. So two more open this weekend. uh, And I think they're going to continue to look at other ones as other members of council started flagging areas uh, in a meeting we had on Thursday based off feedback they've been receiving from each of their constituents, because I think really every neighborhood or every ward uh, has that high traffic area that people like to be out and about and, and they want to make sure they're following the rules, but uh, actually be able to enjoy the outside. The, uh, the road closures, was there been any, any disruption to the flow of traffic for essential services? No, uh, so the roads that were really picked it really didn't uh, seem to have any impact to uh, commuting traffic uh, or uh, emergency services or essential services. I haven't been hearing any complaints, and uh, and I don't really expect that. We didn't. Um, these these are roads that would technically be defined as arterial roads, so main roads, but they're they're sort of main roads within communities instead of the the main commuting roads uh themselves so that's why i think overall that it's been really positive uh you know there's there's i think a few folks not everyone on our council would agree uh with it but uh, that's the case with pretty much any issue as well how do you see this current pandemic changing the way we build our cities and infrastructure in the future? And in, in particular, I'm looking at the sidewalk. You know, uh, a lot of people have talked about you can't walk on a sidewalk because it's less than six feet across and we're supposed to stay six feet uh, six feet apart. Do, do you see this changing the way infrastructure is going to be built in cities? I think you are going to start seeing a bit of a shift. I mean, even in Edmonton, before this happened, we started to um, uh, address the space beside arterial roads. So as we're reconstructing arterial roads now, it's it's essentially a requirement, unless just technically not feasible, to put in a, a multi-use path that's at least three meters wide. And and again, the idea behind that is that you know you've got this space typically on a boulevard separating you from a arterial road. So why not use that space? That there's really no downside to it. And at the same time, you just provide more people with additional space, and, and which is good uh, and by making a multi-use trail, then it really provides another avenue for folks who are uh, cycling to be able to navigate uh, our city and access different resources. And folks who are just looking for a good walk have that space. I think the other thing you're going to see that will change, and it's something we've been talking about and, and something that's changed already, are the pedestrian activated push button signals at traffic uh, intersections, uh, major intersections. So we've uh, deactivated a little over 50 of them already and more of them, more of them will be deactivated because there was that concern about having to push that button. And my hope actually, and, and I think it's the case that you'll see is that, you know, if, you, if we can get away with deactivating those now, why bother reactivating them in the future? And then when we're building new areas or, you know, upgrading uh, roadways or intersections or, or different infrastructure, let's make sure we're taking out those um, those buttons that really don't serve a lot of purpose. They, they were built under a very old way of thinking. And, and particularly when you're talking about intersections where you have two main roads coming together, there's really no purpose at all for having those buttons. And yet we have them. So there's so many of them across our city. Uh, it's time to get rid of those too. Andrew, I want to thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Andrew Knack is a city councillor in Edmonton. It seems municipalities across the country are wrestling with how to approach the closure of roads with some leading others following, and then others not doing anything at all. I want to thank Andrew Knack, Sarah Hoyles of Paths for People, and Sean Menard, Capital Ward Counselor in the City of Ottawa. And I want to thank you for listening to the Unpublished Cafe. Stay safe. I'm Ed Hand. <music>